Hey guys, so welcome to the next class on music and musicality and today the old thing we have to learn is how to get into the rhythm, which means how to find the one that Felipe told you in the previous class and how to predict the breaks. We're also going to talk a bit about interpretation music after, but let's go into it. The first thing you need to know is the goal is actually to put this somewhere around here so you'll understand. I'm going to be honest about this, it's the first time I teach this in online version, okay? I always teach this in my boot camps or my intensives or my normal classes, but the idea now is because it's harder to teach this theory on online, I'm going to put a lot of aids. So if at some point I disappear, you'll understand why, but you can still listen to me. Now, because there's a lot of things I'm going to write it down, if you need glasses, go for them because you will need it, okay? So let's start straight into it. Like Felipe said, we need to count in eights because it's the sen it's the phrase of the songs, of the instruments that we are playing, so we need eights. So I'm going to write here some eights. I don't know where it is, it's going to be somewhere here, okay? I'm filming it and then I edit like you know. So it's going to be around here. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm going to write down those four times so you'll understand later on why you'll understand don't worry okay so how to find the one so you can get inside the rhythm straight away when you're going to dance with someone because we all know no one likes to dance with another person that doesn't know how to maintain or get into the correct tempo or rhythm okay so the first tip i'm going to give you is Find the, the pulse, the rhythm, and that is the best thing, easiest thing you have to do because our body does that, we don't know if it is genetic or biologically, but we do it. If you move when you are listening to music, our head is going to move. Let's put one song really quick just to listen to it. Your goal is to just do the head into it. I know you'll feel like you look ridiculous, but trust me, 30 people doing this in a class, sometimes a handwell, it's even funnier, but we all do it, so you'll do it as well. Uh, I'll put a part more faster of the song, okay, with more rhythm to be easier. So we do this natural, right? It's like Felipe says, almost like hard rhythm. Some people move like this, other people move like that, other people like the feet, other people like the hand. Whatever you go for it, move. So this is the easiest thing and that never changed. I'm saying this and I know this is basic but a lot of you sometimes, uh, it might not be your case, but a lot of you sometimes start well and then it doesn't maintain that rhythm, that tempo, okay? You want to maintain that and that's how you know, boom. Of course, you don't want to do that straight away. When you are dancing, you're not going to grab someone and start like this, but when you are practicing musicality or listen to music in the car, just do that and that way you'll become inside, it will be easier, okay? So first thing, find the rhythm. Now the second thing is find that one, that strong beat that Felipe told you about. Okay, the easiest one to find is in the beginning of the song. The first time the instrument gets in, it's a one. Easy, fine. The only thing you have to be careful is the introductions of the song because sometimes it starts with trrr, ba, 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 ba. So that trrr will be a preparation, okay? So introductions, be careful, but when the tempo starts normally, it will be the one. Let's try this version. Down. Simple, yeah? That, boom. This is still count as introduction, so you need to be careful, although you can still count them. But let's wait for the more beats starting coming in, okay? This will be once or five, we'll go over this. Look. So you do have that preparation. 
and then it started, okay? So that is the easiest one to find and it's right here with a circle, go for it. I'll put the subtitles below so you'll see them as well. But the first one to check it out is that one. That one is the easiest. Now the second easiest ones to find out is after the breaks, it works the same way. I know you still don't know how to predict the breaks, but don't worry, we'll help you. But after the breaks, if the music stops, the next one is going to be the same one, exactly the same one in there, okay? So that is going to be the easiest. How to practice that? You just listen to music, and as soon as it starts, you start counting, okay? The one will be that stronger pulse. The music is very, if you breathe in the music, you'll go, and you'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're breathing, let's try this. I'll put the same part of the song, wait a second. <laughs> I'm a terrible singer, Felipe is bad at that, so they should be doing this, but anyway, I'm not singing, I'm talking with style, whatever. Okay, so just to understand, okay? If you don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, and one. So that one is going to be a pulse. Now you need to be careful. The first one is easier. Now, why do we put, why did I put four eights and not just one? So we find out and we, you will know and understand that the majority of musics, not all, but the majority of musics changes within uh, 16s or 32s. What is this? So if we play phrases of eights, Okay, at some point we know that if the music changes, we're going to be after one of those eights. And we realize and we try to make it to be normally in bachata on the 32 tempo. So normally on the 32 tempos, which is four eights, the music, something on the music is going to change. It can be a break, it can be the male singer become a female, the, the female singer of the song, it can be uh, the addition of an instrument, it can be the taking off of an instrument, it can be anything, but something is going to change on that music, okay? It can be, again, anything, and that's what you need to be careful with, because when predicting the breaks, you don't really know if you don't know the song, but the idea is it will be there, somewhere around there. Now, some musics work with 16, which is just two eights, it really depends also how you count. This also works for salsa, although it has a bit more harder to count, but it's basically it will be the same thing if you want to practice those. And the beauty thing is almost all the pop songs, if you want to work with pop, and not just pop, but pop, it's like 90% of the musics are like this, so for you to practice, you can work the same way, so you can practice this, okay? The only thing, instead of 32, they can go back to 64, so they can do even more of repetition of this song. But basically, to make it easier, the only thing you need to know is, we have phrases, after 16, they norm the phrase, you'll understand because the one will be slightly more predominant, but you'll understand that it's repeating the same symphony, okay? But then after those 32s, it will something change. They will put another guitar, they will put a piano into it, they will take, they will take everything which is the break, okay? It can be anything, but it will change. Why is this important? Because it's there where you predict the breaks and we all like to dance with people that know where the breaks are and do them. Also, it's like, imagine the beginning where there is normally less instruments because of the introduction. We don't want to start full power, so you want to start slower and then build up. It's just like a music, the music builds up, you want to do the same with your dance to make it more interesting. So that's why it's important to know how to count those things, okay? So the second exercise I want to do with you is literally with the fingers, we are going to see with the musics that we pick if after those four eights, we, the music is going to change anything and if that's what did it, okay? Now bear in mind that you cannot start anywhere. You have to start on that strong eight on the first line, okay? That beginning or after a break or if 
after a changing, okay? It's not just a break, it's after a changing. So let's try one more time. Let's see with this music, actually, since we are using this music. Where is it? I'll go straight away, I'll cut the introduction, although you can count the introductions just the same, but I'll go out. Careful with it. Okay. I, I need to go back with With me. Seven, eight, one. If it's not 32, it's 64. Well, let's see. Should be now. Something is going to change. He changed. Did you see? Like, he was like, ah, na, 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 na. and I'm a terrible singer. Don't joke about me. If you want to put on the comments, go for it. But I will not, I will not read those. Really, will read those ones, okay? But then it's again, na, na. it becomes different. The way he's singing is different, okay? And this is what's going to happen predominantly in all the songs, okay? Now, let's try with another one. So let's try with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One. So it changes on the sixteenth. The reason why it does this actually is because we don't we didn't count the introduction. So the introduction in this particular song will join into it. But you saw that it changes it. So if it changes it, we start counting again. This is the good good choice I put this song. Because this is exactly what's going to happen a lot with the music. Is it will not be 32, it will be 16s, and then we need to see after. So when something changes, this is when you have to count. Okay, now you are going to say do we have to do this all the time when you're dancing? No, of course not, okay? This is in the beginning when you're trying to understand music. Then this becomes so natural that it just pops into you and you understand, okay? But you'll still count every once in a while, but you don't want to understand, especially with new songs. But we'll go again, we'll go again. I'll go straight away to that part, okay? <laughs> Should be now, right? Exactly the same thing. After the four eights, the 32 tempos, bam, the music changed. Okay, there was a break and we kept going. Now, let's talk about those breaks. Okay, we have the thing here and the breaks can be in different places. So it can be the last five, six, seven, eight, or it also can be after those eight on the first one, two, three, four. Okay? So how do we know? Hey hey, we don't, okay, unless you know the music. So basically we need to listen to it. But there is a trick that we can do it. Okay? Don't worry, we'll go over that. So basically again, the breaks can be that last five, six, seven, eight, or after that eight, that one, two, three, four, after. Now, how long is those breaks? Don't, don't, there's no way I can tell you. We never know, it's different on any songs. A break is a break. You'll have to wait for the next instrument to come in so you know where the one is, okay? So the break can take eight times, can take just that five, six, seven, eight, can be the actual break, so it never actually breaks the music just continues but there is no instruments in it you know what I mean so the break can be a harsh break like boom and there is an actual stop or it can be a boom so there is no way to tell you how long is that break and how is it going to be until you listen to the song for the first time but what you can predict is the break is going to be there. This is for when you don't know the song. When you know the song I expect you to know where it is so it will be easier okay so what do you do there? If you understand that the break is coming, don't do crazy shit. Doesn't work, okay? Do something simple that you can just like a twist of the, the, the yarn. For example, you do pa and stop. Or you do boom and keep going. Yeah, you just throw the arm and then how the music reacts, you will react to it, okay? All the music acts, you're reacting to it. Okay, so don't do crazy shit when you want to go for the, the breaks, you know it's coming. 
How also do you know it's coming? Is that preparation, guys? If you see, pa, pa, the, be, right before there was a preparation. Normally there is a preparation to tell you the break is coming. It's right before, but it is there, and you listen to every song. Let's watch this. I'll put this one again. Let's go straight away after the introduction, just to be easy. I'll put it again, sorry, it was really... Introduction, right? What? Okay, da 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 da! Boom! Tells you something is coming, it needs to be careful. See that that slightly before, right before Pau, he explains you that it is. So it is marked here. It's normally on the last seven eight. Okay. Now if you see this, I add an extra five, six, seven, eight on the top and one, two, three, four on the bottom. The goal is for you it is like the previous 32s and the after 32. So you understand that the one is after, the big one is after, and also the breaks will come before, okay? The breaks are changing in songs, but remember, it's not always breaks after 32 tempos, it's a changing in the song being the break, one of those changings, okay? Let me come back to here to see what I also have to talk. Ah, another thing that we have to talk is when finding the one, a lot of you in the beginning will mix the fives and the ones together, okay? Especially these ones with these ones. And the idea is it's okay, because it's very similar. There is a slightly changing, which is if you really wait a bit more, a bit more counts, you'll understand if it, the music is going up or down and you understand if it was actually a stronger pulse or if it was just like a half strong pulse, okay? So my goal to you is, it's very easy, or my tip to you, it's very easy if you grab the partner straight away in the beginning of the dance. Bam, the music is loud, the music starts, you're already counting, you'll never be wrong because you'll get in the right way in the beginning. But what happens if you ask someone to dance straight away because, oh, the music is done, and the girl or the guy will go, oh, let me just put my glass, or oh, let me just tie my shoes, or oh, just let me do whatever, and then time is up, you didn't count, you're answering, and now you are in the middle of the song and you don't know what to do. My tip to you is wait five counts. 5 to 9 counts, 5 to 8 counts, okay? Basically, when you listen that first pulse, start counting 1, 2, 3, 4, because if something changes, because if it will be the 1, because it's 4 blocks, okay? You'll understand if you started on 5 or on 1. So if you started wrong, you just start over and you save yourself of that one, okay? What can you do to do this? Look, you grab someone or someone grab you. While you are walking to the place where you're going to dance, you can already get ready. Okay, you remember the posture? Get ready. Do the same here. Get ready, okay? What else? If you already are there, they grab you straight away and you're already there. Easy. Throw an arm. Through a head roll. Central bachata is the easiest for this kind of stuff, guys, because you can just pull a body roll. And while you are doing it, do it slow so you can count for yourself. Don't start counting in the mouth. I've seen this many times and we know what. Hopeful, don't do it. Count inside and you'll find out if you are on one on five. So don't be, actually be okay to don't start straight away crazy, okay? Do an introduction, feel your partner, but while you're feeling it, understanding where the one is so you get ready, okay? So again, Second tip for you, I think it's the second, I don't know which tip it is already, but tip for you, count a bit longer, five, six, seven, eight, count five, five tempos will work, because one, two, three, four, the five you'll know if you're correct or you are wrong, okay, so no problem, count on that. And that's basically what we have to talk about this. So you have the ones, the last five, six, seven, eight will be a preparation, uh, sorry, will be a break or the after five, six, seven, eight will be one, two, three, four. It will also be a break. On the last seven, eight, we'll have a preparation to let you know something is going to happen. It can be a break or not. You need to be ready. And then which ones are the easiest and the hardest ones to find? The easiest is the beginning of the song and after changing uh, or a break. The second one is right this one. So it's likely 
not the second 16, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8. Tau. That one will also be easier because it's more noticeable because the sentence is starting again. If, if he's doing a um, paragraph, he will start another one, okay? Um, so bear in mind, another exercise I want you to do is for you to practice this with all songs. The finger exercise, go for it. Use it, abuse it in the car going to work while you are doing whatever. Do the four exercises because then it becomes so natural and you can play it's like, oh, this song is this, oh, this song is that. So it's perfect. Continue. With bachata, we do have a problem. I don't know why this happened. I need to be honest about this. I hate it when this happened, but then it kind of becomes interesting if you always nail this, okay? Which is the extra four tempos. Sometimes the music after those 32 will just give you an extra four tempos. You can count it as one, two, three, four, or five, six, seven, eight. So it will be basically, one, two, four, five, seven, eight, one, two, eight, one, two, eight, one, three, four, five, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, and then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again. So is it like the extra that, I don't know it's there, but it is there and we need to be careful on it because it changes our rhythm or not rhythm, but the, the, the one, okay? The, the dancing on one with the left or with the right, depending on what paper are you rolling. But you need to be careful with this. How do we know this? Guys, you do not, okay? You have after that 32s, you need to keep counting, be careful because one, two, three, four, if it is a one again, instead of a five, it will be another pulse, okay? Sometimes you'll actually feel it like a big preparation, actually. So that will last that extra one, two, three, four, it feels like an extra five, six, seven, eight, which is an extra preparation to start over. So you just need to keep counting. Excuse me. A lot of musics do this and you need to be careful. There is nothing I can do. There is no secret when it's going to happen. Some musics have it. Some, mu some musics have it. Yes. Some musics don't have it and you need to deal with it. And it's fine because it's funny because it becomes to understand. The problem is when you are in a crazy move and then you don't know how to get out, but you end up learning. Don't worry. Keep practicing this creep counting and it's fine. Let me see if we need anything else. Oh, right, we don't need this. So, imagine that I never heard the music and I told you it's impossible to know how the break is going to be and you really want to nail that break, okay? I'm going to tell you what I do specifically what I teach my students to do, including you, because now you're our student. Here we go. When you don't know the song, is the actually very first time you know the song. The first time you're going, that break appears it's to go away. You don't count it, you lose it. If you missed it, you missed it. You have to be okay with it. But, but, if you heard how it is the first break, there is no excuse to fail the second or the third break. And the reason is because the musics are repetitive. The instrument playing around is repetitive. There might be changings, but it is repetitive. So we always start with an intro. Let's clean that intro for now. And then we have verse, bridge to the chorus, so chorus, and then it will be again verse or bridge, chorus again, repeat, repeat, so the music repeats and is no different for the instruments, it's exactly that. So, if the first break is that way, my friends, the second break will 99% of the times be exactly the same way. So you want to nail it. Let, I'll put the best example I have here, which is this song. I always use this one because it's like perfect to explain this, okay? Now, 
that doesn't mean that it, now right now we did two thirties twos and it was perfectly pa 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 pa. That doesn't mean that the next thirty two at the end will be the same break. Okay, it will be a, if it, if it is a break, it will probably be the same. But it might just be a changing of instrument. It might put another instrument or take another instrument or change the singer, whatever. Remember, I for me voice is an instrument. For a lot of people, is I think for all musicians is. I hope it is. That's how we see it, but I, I do talk singers and instruments, but the singer is an instrument, okay? So just to make it clear here, so they don't attack me and stuff like this. Okay, so here we go. Pa, 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 and then it repeats it. So the first one, I'm okay if you fail, you should be okay if you fail, if you never listen to the song. Good luck, it's okay, it happens to everyone, but you have no excuse for the second go or the third go because the break is probably, if not always, the same. So you have no excuse to make that dance fail in that break. So that's how you know. Other option you can have is listen to everything that is released every time, listen to everything, which is impossible, but good luck. We also do that. So please, guys, bear in mind to remember this. Find the rhythm. Your head does that for yourself. Your body gives you that. You don't have to count anything. It gives you that. Find the one. Search that pulse. If you are in the beginning of the music, beautiful. If you don't, if you cannot wait for that break to find that one, it's okay. Then you want to find that one. Okay, that accent within the pulses. The pulses find that accent, that stronger one that you feel. The more ground song, the more ground pulse. Sorry, the more grounded music part. Boom. Two and breathe with it. Remember, count five, uh, five uh, tempos so you know where you are to make sure you are not on that five because some of them are similar, okay? And then you have to find how many, where are you on the 1632s rule so you find that break. And don't think that just because you got it right straight away you have to stop doing it because again, in Bachata we have that extras that you can be anywhere anytime and you have to be ready for it what else and that's it guys the last thing that i want to talk about is just for the more advanced and if it's uh, the type of instruments and how do we dance to for me and this is not everyone uses this it's not a rule but i do it if the music is more, is a more grounded song i will dance more down but if the music changes and becomes more um, high pitch, high energy, I will go up and start more upper body, okay? This is just to make the song more dynamic, it's not really to find the rhythm or to find the breaks, it's just to talk more about how to make it more dynamic and not just start slow and then building it, is the difference is to raise. If it's more like ding, 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 I will dance more ding, 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 or with the footwork, but footwork is exception, if we are focused on down, really down, and this footwork is different, and we are going to talk about on this course, on this Sorry, the block because it's about footwork as well, but actually in the next class. But the idea is taking footwork, mo body movement, movement that you want to do it, higher pitch when it's like ding, 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 and boom to portray more of the instruments. You can also play with this because the idea is you play with this so we can see which instruments you are tuning into, okay, which you are listening and expressing. So the beauty of this is because you have such a mix of instruments, we can actually see if it will help us see which what, what you're feeling, depending on if you're dancing down or up, okay? And that's what we have to do. Please review this as many times as you can. It's not as easy to teach you this because I don't know which questions do you are guys having at the moment. I cannot do this more dynamic when it comes to answering questions, okay? But try to see it again, to try to understand. Everything is here to help you out, most as I, of my abilities. So, go get into the video. Hello guys, welcome to the class on music. All right, why is this relevant? So a lot of you have gone dancing and it's like, why is this a bachata? Why is that a salsa? Or everyone knows Romeo Santos, Danny J, all these famous singers that are bachata singers. Um, so what is it that makes a song have the bachata bass? What instruments are sounding? Um, usually a lot of people uh, question like, what instruments that have a bachata say? There's a lot of, um, what do you say, discussions about it. 
And I'm just gonna tell you the usual instruments that you have in a bachata song, okay? And then I'm gonna throw in some more instruments that I've heard um, around. All right, so the first instrument that we usually hear as the bachata bass, so what marks the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, is the bongo. And this is what it sounds like. Pick with the bass. Okay, so we're going to percussion instruments. This is instruments that you be into. The next one is la guira. So this instrument, you actually play scratching, okay? So those, uh, both instruments, the bongo and the guira, would make what we usually know as the bachata bass, and both together combined would sound something like this. So now we're going into uh, instruments that create uh, musical notes, okay? Uh, so usually you're gonna find two guitars, okay? One that is the rhythm guitar, so that means one that is gonna mark the rhythm, same as the percussion, for example, and then you're gonna have a lead guitar, that is the one that goes in the mambo. So when you hear all those shines in the music, like okay, that usually is a lead guitar, okay? Um, so let's hear the rhythm guitar first, and then the lead guitar, and then both combined. But not least, you have the bass guitar, okay, which usually has a deeper sound, okay, and it's gonna be in the background giving it a little more of a round noise, okay, this is what it sounds like. All three, so the lead guitar, the rhythm guitar, and the bass, all together would uh, would sound like this. Okay. Okay. So those are like the uh, essential, so to speak, that they usually say. Uh, that you need to create a bachata song. So, so that would be the bongo, so the tapping rhythm, the guira, the one that you scratch, <laughs> okay, the lead guitar, and doing all the shines and stuff, the bass guitar, uh, sorry, the rhythm guitar that marks the rhythm, and then the bass in the background creating that route noise. Um, and then you, on top of it, you would put the, the vocals, the singers, singing the lyrics, etc. And then, um, to be fair, there are lots of different instruments, as, as you know, bachata is like, um, um, bachata is, what, what's the phrase? Bachata is taking over, right? So there are lots of uh, new instruments and new waves of music, you know, remixes and stuff. So there are lots of different instruments that you can actually hear into 
abachata, but that's, those would be like the basic, usual, um, typical ones that you're gonna find in bachata. But just to give you examples, a uh, song with violins. <laughs> Okay, a song that starts with a piano, for example. And uh, you can even find accordions, like Romeo Santos, sometimes I've heard songs that have accordions in them. So my proposition for you is like, um, go find songs that you like, try to uh, identify the instruments, it's going to give you a lot of musicality and things to connect to the song and play with the song afterwards if you're actually if you actually understand and picture what you're hearing, uh, like it's gonna improve your dance when you're listening to music. Okay. Um, the next, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the pulse and the accent, which will make a lot more sense when Tiago later uh, explains to you how to find the one. Okay. But it's something I also think it's important for you to understand. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the pulse in the music. Okay. So think of uh, the pulse of your heartbeat, like boom, boom. Boom, boom, all right? That would be the pulse in the music. Um, sometimes you're at a club or a disco and you, you see people doing this, they're usually following that pulse in the music, okay? So for example, when we count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we're usually following that pulse. The pulse can be faster, can be slower, um, but every song has a pulse that is telling you the rhythm, the speed of the song, okay? That's what we call the pulse. Think of the heartbeat and you will never forget. Boom, 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 five, six, seven, eight, whatever, all right? And then another important thing that um, usually people sometimes struggle with is the accent of the music, okay? So for example, in bachata we have an accent in one and then another accent in five. Okay, um, let me put it in different words. Think of uh, an actual word like table. Okay, uh, so table has an accent on the first syllable, table, all right? Um, so if it had it on the second one, table, that would be a different word. It sounds weird, right? It sounds like that's, that's sketchy, all right? Um, so that's the accent. So music has accents. Uh, one of the easiest ways to find an accent is actually hearing to the singer. So the singer will always place the accent of the word in the accent of uh, the music. So if the phrase is, I'm buying a table, the accents would be in buying and table. So that would be the same in the music. Those would be the accents in the music. So in other words, for example, in bachata, you would have it in one and in five. So you would put the accent in one and keep the pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the pulse is divided in eight. That would be the speed. Boom, boom, boom. You can make it faster. Boom, two, three, four. All right. And the accent would be that one and that five. That is where the accent of the song goes in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One added thing that bachata has is that it usually goes down and up again. So one would start at the top. So we've got one, two, three, four. And then the five is going to be another accent, but not as hard, um, as loud as the first one. So five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what usually happens in a, in a bachata song. So that would be the pulse, the speed, the rhythm. That's continues all the time. Sometimes in songs they can even change. Um, and then the accent that would be that hard note that you really want to find uh, when you start dancing to know whether you're going to the left or you're going to the right or where in the song you are, okay? So make sure you at least understand these concepts, okay? It's not something to study, but like, so you know what's happening when you hear a song. Oh, that's the piano or that's the violin. Oh, there's the accent. And the pulse is this rhythm, okay? So make sure you understand these concepts.